When it comes to religion, philosophy is the wrong tool for the job. Yet, as we all know, it's the only tool they have, mostly because the right tool for the job conclusively proves them irrational. So I'm going to dive into the problem with religious philosophical arguments and why nobody, nobody ought to take any of this seriously. I hope it helps, even though I know the religious will never be able to figure it out. So let's get going. I know, I know, I say this a lot. Philosophy is the wrong tool for the job that the religious are trying to make it do, yet the religious insist on using it to the exclusion of virtually all else. Why? Because they really have no choice. Nothing else gets them where they desperately want to go, and that's really the biggest problem that they have. They start with a goal in mind, and it doesn't matter to them if the goal is valid or the beliefs are true. It makes them feel good, so, you know, screw it. That's what they're going to go with, because that's where they want to be. And that's not how this works. It never has been, and it never will be. Yet the only tool they have in their arsenal is the tool that doesn't actually function that way. So let's go see why this is such a problem for the religious. Now, I've said on numerous occasions that philosophy, as I've already said, is the wrong tool for the job that the religious want to be doing, mostly because the right tool for the job, science, tells them that they're out of their freaking minds. And this is one of the many reasons why starting with an emotionally comforting conclusion reached for no good intellectual reason is the wrong thing to do. When you absolutely refuse to admit that you're wrong because being honest would make you sad, you're in for a world of trouble when others take a look at your claims. And that's really why philosophy doesn't get the religious anywhere. Because it's like trying to use a sledgehammer to fix a china cup. It doesn't actually get you anywhere useful. And that's the thing that the religious don't seem able to get through their heads. Because, as we all know, they just don't care. This is all just an illusion to make it seem like they have the slightest idea what the hell they're talking about. So, I wanted to dive just a little bit deeper into it today and see where they're really going wrong. Because they're absolutely going wrong, and they can't figure that out. Recently, I was watching the ongoing debate between Rationality Rules and Cameron Bertuzzi, and you all know Cameron, I've done some of his videos around here. He's the guy that does Capturing Christianity on YouTube. Now, it is a good watch, and I do recommend people go and check it out, but the one thing that I always notice is that when Rationality Rules goes through Cameron's syllogisms, he's really only addressing a symptom of the problems, not the problems themselves. The problem is that all of his premises do not stack up to objective reality. I don't really care if it's put in proper syllogistic form. It's still stupid. And the whole point of my channel is going after stupidity no matter where it hides. So, I wanted to take a couple of common religious philosophical arguments, not the ones constantly brought up by the likes of William Lane Craig or Frank Turek or anything, and show why these things just don't make sense, no matter how they're phrased, because philosophy is absolutely the wrong tool for the job that these people are trying to do. But, as we all know, it's the only tool they have because every other tool makes them look stupid. So, for this, I'm going to go back to the same website that I used way back in 2018 when I put up my 40 Bad Arguments for God series. We're going to start with a really simple and obviously nonsensical one to point out the basic problems that the religious have. 
And this is the argument from ignorance, at least that's how it's described by the author, which states, Premise 1. There are things that we cannot explain yet. Conclusion. Those things must be created by God. Now, this is dumb, and yes, about as low-hanging fruit as you can possibly get. But it's just a simple example, so please bear with me. It follows the typical, therefore God model that I exposed way back when I went through the list the first time. Just because you plug, therefore God, onto the end of a series of statements, that doesn't mean that you've proven God. I could just add, therefore, invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies, and it doesn't really change the argument any. Because this isn't really an argument. It's a statement of blind faith. It is theists desperately trying to get to their faith-based conclusions and using a philosophical framework to do it. Except this isn't really a valid use of philosophy. It's like, Two children on the playground screaming at each other. My father is stronger than your father. Yeah, except you can't rationally test those conclusions by shouting at each other. It isn't a means to discover factual truth. And factual truth is really what's at stake here. It's really what we're after. It's really what I'm after. It's not what the religious are after because they don't care. They are just being immature. So, let's move on to something slightly more sophisticated. And I say slightly because there are no religious philosophical arguments that actually get you anywhere useful. So, I'm going to go with the argument from the Big Bang, which is pretty close to the cosmological argument if you think about it, and it's going to dismiss that one as well. But here we go. Premise 1. The Big Bang, according to the best scientific opinion of our day, was the beginning of the physical universe, including not only matter and energy, but space and time and the laws of physics. Premise 2. The universe came to be ex nihilo from 1. Premise 3. Something outside of the universe, including outside of its physical laws, must have brought the universe into existence from 2. Premise 4. Only God could exist outside the universe. Premise 5. God must have caused the universe to exist from 3 and 4. Conclusion. God exists. Now, if you already buy into the basic idea, that probably makes sense to you, which is why all of these videos and articles and things that the religious do are aimed not at the skeptical, but at the already religious. They aren't trying to convince us they're trying to reinforce the beliefs of the people that already hold them. It's just a circle jerk of philosophical masturbation. It doesn't actually establish anything. So, let's go and break this down. The first premise is fine. It's not completely accurate, but as a starting point, we can go with it. We can validate that by looking at science and agreeing that, yes, there was a Big Bang. However, I would quibble with the wording, as I often do, because it says there was a beginning of THE physical universe. In fact, the reality is there was only a beginning to OUR physical universe started with the Big Bang. It says nothing about any other potential universes that might be out there. The religious assume, with no justification whatsoever, that our universe is automatically all that ever was or all that ever will be, and any other universes that might be out there, all of them have to be exactly and precisely identical to ours. I even did a video recently where William Lane Craig said exactly that. Yet, how exactly does he know that? How did he make the determination, and how did he verify that as objectively true in the real world? And the answer, of course, is that he didn't. He phrases things specifically so that he can get to the conclusion that he wants to reach. It's why we can't gloss over how the premises are phrased, just because, with a cursory evaluation, they seem to be more or less fair. 
we can't just gloss over the details and try to get to the meat of their argument because their argument really has no meat. And that's the problem. It's all carefully designed to serve their purposes. Had a theist said this to me, I would have immediately objected to this premise, not because I'm trying to quibble, but because it's already entirely self-serving, and that's not a way to reach objective truth. Premise 2 is just as bad. Science does not think that the universe came into existence ex nihilo. That's religion, not science. And I really get tired of having to point that out to people because they're just really ignorant of their own beliefs. The Big Bang refers only to the expansion of energy and eventually matter. It does not refer to what might have been there before. We simply don't know. And this is yet another place where the religious are just trying to smuggle their own ideas into the equation and pretend that we're just like they are. But we're not. We're just not. And you can just see it if you look that all of these things are carefully lined up to reach the conclusion they want to reach, and that the errors, if you allow them to get away from you, simply compound until eventually they're not talking about reality anymore, they're talking about religion. So this is yet another premise that I would reject out of hand because it doesn't accurately reflect reality. They are counting on their audience being dumb. Because the audience that they're talking to, the audience that they're designing these arguments for, that audience is dumb. Don't give them the rope they need to hang you. Call them out on absolutely every discrepancy. Because if you do that, their entire argument falls apart. Premise 3 says that something outside of the universe has to be responsible. Yeah, says who? In fact, going back to what William Lane Craig said in a recent video, he says that he's talking about absolutely everything when he refers to the universe. Yep, he's not talking about God, is he? So make up your mind, William. What are you actually talking about? If you're going to define the universe to mean absolutely everything that exists, you can't just turn around 30 seconds later and make an exception. Except that's usually what they do. Remember, they are assuming that their audience isn't smart enough to know any better. They're not talking to us. You have to keep them honest. Either you're talking about absolutely everything that exists, which means you have to include your hypothetical God, or you're not. You cannot arbitrarily exclude your favorite explanation from your list of absolutely everything. And if you're going to allow one thing to be outside of your universe, why can't you allow other things? You have to justify your choices rationally. And this is exactly why they do it, in fact. Because if they allowed any other potential solutions to be outside of everything, then they have no rational way to claim that God did it because this is not a rational argument, is it? But we're going to come back to this again, so let's move on. Premise 4. Only God could exist outside of the universe. Yeah, says who? Who says God exists at all? This is where it becomes very, very obvious that they're not talking to us at all. This is just a bald assertion meant to appeal to an already religious audience. Why God? Why not Odin? Why not Zeus? Why not the flying spaghetti monster? What makes God your go-to position other than your emotional reliance on your blind faith? And this is exactly where any skeptic should put on the brakes and object. But if you look back at the entire construction of the argument, it's all been leading up to this point. It's why you should say, hey, wait a minute, from the very first premise. Because if you did, they'd never get to this point at all. This is just begging the question writ large. They are assuming their conclusion without demonstrating their conclusion because that's where they run into all the trouble. They can't prove God. That's the whole point. That's why they're using philosophy in the first place. 
And this is also where we could insert absolutely anything else into the argument and the argument doesn't change any. Insert Shinamasta, the Hindu goddess of self-sacrifice and sexual restraint, who chopped off her own head and wanders around holding it while spurting streams of divine blood from her neck. It doesn't matter. Pick anything. The point is, you don't just get to insert the solution you favor and expect no one to object. You have to prove it, and you can't prove it with philosophy. The entire argument fails catastrophically at this point. But yeah, let's continue for shits and giggles. We might as well. Premise 5. God must have caused the universe to exist. Yeah. Again, says who? We've already done away with this line of irrational thinking back in premise 4, if not before that. Religious apologists are just trying to smuggle in their favorite explanation and hoping nobody notices. Here's something else that nobody wants to talk about, though. A premise is only acceptable in an argument if everyone involved in the conversation agrees to it. It's only worthwhile if it's actually true. And that's one more reason they don't want to talk to us, if you notice. Because we're going to point out how self-serving all of this is. It isn't just the religious who do this either. I ran into an argument way back in 2016 where someone online was trying to define Trump as evil. And one of his premises was that Trump is literally that German painter guy from the 1940s with the mustache. And that's just an assertion. It's not a valid premise. You have to prove it. And he couldn't. And I pointed that out, and he screamed at me and ran away. I'm sorry, this is not how rational argumentation goes. It just doesn't work that way. And finally, we get to the conclusion, which is the typical, therefore God, nonsense. But it certainly isn't earned. For one thing, you can't arbitrarily define anything in reality into reality through philosophy. You just can't. We can go back and replace God with invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies, and that doesn't mean the pixies exist either. This argument doesn't get you anywhere worthwhile, and neither do any of the others. This is just religious apologists trying to talk other believers into saying, oh right, yeah, that makes sense to me. But it doesn't. It just doesn't. Just because you're emotionally attached to the conclusion, that doesn't make the conclusion objectively true. That's what we're trying to get to here. Objective truth. Demonstrable fact. And you can't do that with philosophy. Not in these terms. It's not what it's there for. And there are many things that philosophy can do for you, don't get me wrong. This just isn't one of them. And that's why philosophy is the wrong tool for the job. But it's the only tool that the religious have left. In reality, if there was a god of some kind, we should be able to find it through direct, demonstrable evidence for its existence. Except we just can't. The right tool to use here is science. Yet, science has nothing at all to say to corroborate the claims of the religious. The religious have defined their gods, arbitrarily I might add, to ensure it, because they know there's nothing there for science to find. It's all wishful thinking for emotional reasons. So, because they know that they can't use the right tool for the job, it just proves them wrong after all, or at least it gives them nothing at all with which they can work, they have to turn to fast talk with a philosophical overlay. They are not using it properly or validly because they just don't care. We know they don't care. If they did, they'd talk to us, not about us and not to their own straw man versions of us, They'd let the chips fall where they may, and they'd lose absolutely every argument, because what they're bringing to the table, it just isn't at all impressive. Their claims are the very definition of fallacious. You absolutely can't get anywhere near reality from where they are, and they just don't care. 
because it's all about fifis, not facts. And if that's all you care about, then you've got some serious problems. You really do. It's time to grow the hell up and deal with reality as it is. Adults shouldn't have imaginary friends. Come on back when you have some real evidence to present and are willing to use the right tools for the job. Because right now, you're not. And that's just sad.